Hey guys, my name is NS Mishra Rao and I'm an educator at an academy. And you can follow me by downloading the Anacademy learning app where you can find the rest of my courses. And today we'll be discussing about the momentum equation and the velocity of sound in a flow. So these are the two things which we'll be discussing in this lesson. So you can rate, you can review and you can also recommend this to your friends and you can also share this video. And you can also follow us on our YouTube channel where you'll find lots of amazing videos and you can expand your knowledge. So I'm looking forward to have a good discussion. Have a good day guys. Hello guys and welcome back and today we will be discussing the lesson 6 of the topic of the compressible flow. And in this lesson we will be understanding the momentum equation, the velocity of the pressure wave in a fluid and the expression for the velocity of a sound wave in a fluid. And once again I would like to introduce myself. My name is Anis Mishra and it may be mechanical and I am currently working as a research assistant for a PhD scholar at IC. And in the past I worked as an intern at Ted Income Limited. A field of interest lies in thermal fluid mechanics of materials done on aptitude and research. So this is my short summary. So first of all you understand what is the momentum equation. So as the name will suggest the momentum is equal to the product of the mass into velocity. So the rate of change of momentum will be equal to rho into a into v into v. So this value is equal to the, uh, to the rate of change of momentum. Also the momentum or you can say that the, the mass flow rate will remain constant throughout the flow meaning the mass flow rate it is not affected by the pressure or you can say that the mass flow rate is the same in an incompressible flow and that of an a compressible flow. So it is like not affected by the quantity of pressure which is acting on it. So if we have like this particular section in which there are like two different uh, the uh, types of pressure then we can say that the mass flow rate in this section will be the same as the mass flow rate in this section. So we can say that in the end that the mass flow rate will be seen throughout this section. Also the net force is equal to the rate of change of the momentum in that particular uh, at that particular direction. So so if we have so if you consider a pipe for example and uh, and the shape is somewhat like this. So uh, and uh, let the velocity in this uh, you know like at this section be equal to v2 and at this section be equal to v1. So the net force will be equal to the mass into the velocity or you can say that the rate of change of mass into the difference of the velocity in these two sections. So like its value will be equal to rho into a into v into the v2 minus of v1. Over here the value of v2 is equal to the final velocity and the v1 is equal to the initial velocity. Yeah. And now we will be understanding the velocity of sound or a pressure wave in a fluid. So first of all, we'll go to the uh, go to the like understanding of how it actually works. So the velocity with which the wave it travels it depends upon the distance of the molecule. So basically, there are like uh, three mediums. They are like namely the solid, liquid, and gases. So in the solid, the molecules they are more closely packed. So as a result of that, the wave is easily able to propagate. But in the case of liquid the molecule are at a, a little less distance as that of the solid. So the wave will take some more amount of time or you can say it is or you can say that it will travel at a, a little less speed as compared to that of the solid. And in, in the gases uh, the distance between the molecules is the highest or you can say as the largest. So as a result we can say that the speed of the sound or you can say the wave will travel the slowest in the gases. So we will like uh, go this once again. So the solids are closely packed and hence the sound wave will travel the fastest. In liquid the molecules are less compact as compared to that of the solids. Hence the sound will travel like much slower as compared to that of the solid. And in gases it will travel the slowest because uh, the molecular distance is the highest in the gases. Yeah. So basically the velocity or you can say uh, the pressure wave it, it uh, like it will uh, like mostly depend upon the distance between the molecules. So if the distance in between the molecules is less then it will travel faster. And now we will derive the expression for the velocity of a sound wave in a fluid. So in this we will be considering a, a small cylinder as we can see and it is fitted with a piston. Also let A be the area of this particular region and let B be the uh, velocity in which this piston will move. And let P be the initial pressure at this section and let the rho be the 
initial density also let the dt be equal to t the small time interval in this the piston is at this position initially and with some amount of force this piston will move from this position to this position so let the dt be the time in which the piston will move from this position to this position so this distance will be equal to x and this x is equal to v into dt where v is the velocity of the piston and uh, dt is the time taken also let c be the velocity of the pressure wave per second and traveling in fluid so as a result of the movement of this of this uh, like particular piston there will be the formation of the pressure wave so let c be the velocity in which uh, the pressure wave will travel so the total distance uh, traveled by the pressure wave will be equal to l which is equal to c into dt where c is the speed of the pressure wave and the dt is the time so c into dt will give us the length of the distance which has been covered by this particular pressure wave yeah so the distance traveled uh, by the piston in dt will be equal to v into dt also the distance traveled by the pressure wave in the time dt will be equal to c into dt so we have these two as the distance also let p plus dp be the pressure after the compression so initially uh, the pressure in this section was equal to p and after the compression the uh, the pressure in this section it be uh, it'll be like equal to p plus dp and similarly the density will also be equal to rho plus d rho after the compression yeah so as we know that uh, the mass flow rate will remain constant throughout so it is uh, not affected by the pressure so first uh, like what we'll do is that we will find the mass flow rate for the length l before the compression so the uh, the mass flow rate for the length n will be equal to rho into a into l where rho is the density a is the area and uh, length is the uh, you, can, or, or you can see that it's the length so as we have seen over here we have represent the complete length in the form of c into dt so like what we'll do is we will replace the l over here by c into dt also the mass flow rate after the compression will be equal to rho plus d rho because the density will increase into area because the area of the cross section will remain the same into l and uh, the minus of x because over here the piston has traveled by this small distance so therefore the total mass flow rate will be equal to rho into a into the distance so this is zero and this is the distance so over here we know the value of l it is equal to c into dt and the value of x is equal to v into dt so what we'll do is that we will uh, like uh, replace these two values yeah so this is uh, the mass of the fluid for the length l for the compression and this is for the value after the compression so from the continuity equation the mass of the fluid before and after the compression will uh, like remain the same meaning uh, the mass of the fluid uh, like before the compression will be equal to the mass of the fluid after the compression so what we will basically do is that we will equate these two things yeah so when we equate these two things we get this as the relation so from this we can cancel the value of area and area as they are common also like what we can do is that over here we can cancel the value of dt because uh, the dt is also common in these two parts so after we cancel them we will be getting this as the equation now what we will do is that we will like individually multiply the value of rho into c and v and then we will multiply the value of the, uh, the d rho into c and v so after we multiply them we will be getting this as the complete relation so from this what we will do is that we will bring the value of this rho c over here and then we will be getting the value of this rho v also over here and we will get the value of this part also over here so after we get uh, you know like all these parts we will be getting this as the equation from which we can cancel these two values so after we cancel these two values we get the equation as c into d rho is equal to rho v so we are getting this as the equation of the speed of sound into the small variation of the density and uh, like that is equal to the rho into v where v is the velocity of the piston also when the piston moves there is a change in the velocity and pressure as we all know that so hence uh, we can use the impulse momentum equation over here so the impulse moment equation is that 
the net force is equal to the rate of change of momentum. So the net force will be equal to the uh, the final pressure and the minus of the uh, minus of the initial pressure. So we have written it down, and like that is equal to the rate of change of momentum. So the rate of change of momentum will be equal to the mass rate into the velocity. So you know, like uh, initially uh, the piston was at a stationary position, so the value of the V1 will be equal to zero, and after it has moved, it has the velocity of V. So we will do the V minus of zero. So we have this as the equation. So from this, what we can do is that we can cancel these two values. So we are getting this as the relationship. So from this, what we can do is that we can replace the value of L as T into dt. So if we cancel these two things, we get this as the value of the dp into area. So again from this, we can cancel the value of this A and this A. So we get this as the equation. So the value of dp is equal to rho into C into V. Or we can write the value of C by getting this value over here. So C is equal to dp divided by rho V. So in the equation, we had found the value of C into the dA rho, it's equal to rho into V and over here we have found this as the value of C. So what we'll do is that we will like multiply these two values. So when we multiply these two values, we'll be getting this as the equation. So from this, we can cancel the value of this and this and if we get the value of d d rho over here, we get the value of c to be equal to the root of the dp divided by d rho. So therefore we can say that the speed of the pressure wave is equal to the square root of the difference in the pressure and that divided by the difference in the density. So we get this as the Feynman relationship. So we will go through this derivation once again. Yeah. So this was the initial portion and this is the final portion. So what you have done is that we have found the mass of the fluid, uh, you know, like uh, in the initial portion. So like that was equal to rho into A into L. So we replace the L by this value. And then we found the value of the mass of the fluid after the compression. So we got this as the value. So from the continuity equation, we can see that these two values will be same. So we equated them. So after we equated them, we got this as the relationship. So we have found the one value of C and it is in terms of rho into V. Now, what we have done is that when the piston will move, so it will be or we can say that uh, there will be a change in the velocity and the pressure. So we can use the impulse momentum equation which says that the net force is equal to the rate of change of momentum. So we applied these two equations. So from this we found the second value of C and uh, that is in terms of uh, the, uh, the dB divided by rho V. So to find the value of C what we have done is that we have multiplied these two values. So when we multiply these two values, we got this as the equation. So from this, we cancel these two values and then we got the value of the zero over here. And by doing so, we have found the value of C in terms of the difference in the pressure and the difference in the density. So this is the value of C. So guys, if you had, you know, like any sort of doubt in this lesson, then you can feel free to ask me. You can read, review and you can recommend and you can also follow me. So in the end, I'd like to wish you luck and I wish you to have a very productive day. Thank you.